So why can't we build apps and tech products that actually make you happier? It's like everything has been consumed by this wave of attention hacking, where the only thing that matters is more engagement, manipulating you into spending more and watching more ads, and the people that work at these tech companies with their evil agendas spend their days finding ways to control people's lives and sucking their more into the vortex of doom scrolling and using technology to control the world. Well, no. There is a big misconception about why tech products seem like they don't want to make you happier. Because basically every tech company, from trillion dollar ones to startups, use this very loop to build their products. And this is the key. How do I know this? Well, this is what I do every day as a product manager actually working in tech. And while you may think people building these tech products are agents of evil trying to conquer the world, in reality they look more like this. Myself included. But as it turns out, there is a solution, and we actually can build technology that straight up makes you happier. But to understand it, we first have to understand how tech products are actually built. So congratulations, you're now a product manager in a team in a social media app, woof.com. You're working with engineers and designers, and at any given time, you have a list of features that your team could work on. These are ideas that the engineers might have come up with, or the designer, or you did some research, it doesn't matter. This can be tweaking the algorithm to show more diverse posts on the feed, or sending a notification to users when a friend posts something new. And so, how do you decide what to build and what not to build? What you do is take these ideas and evaluate them against one thing, your OKR. OKR stands for Objective and Key Result. Let's say in this case the objective of your team is to increase the engagement that the users have with the feed of Woof. And the key result is how you measure this. So let's say you've chosen as a metric the average time spent per user per day. So this is what you want to increase. And so all the things that your team could work on are evaluated against one thing. Could this new thing impact your OKR? And if that's the case, great, you go ahead and design a thing and build it, but always with the OKR and the, your goal in mind. And once it's ready, you usually don't just YOLO and launch it. You want to make sure that what you build is actually improving your metric. So what you do is you run an A-B test. 50% of the user base will see the current version and 50% will see the app with the new feature. Give it some time, throw in some basic statistics, and you can actually measure whether what you build is actually improving your metric. This is the reason why when you open Instagram or Spotify with a friend, their app might look different because at any given moment in any big tech product, there are probably hundreds of experiments running at the same time. So you find out that your feature is actually improving your metric, and so all good, you release it and on to the next one. But the smart ones amongst you will probably already have figured out what in this cycle drives products that are built to provide value versus make you descend into a spiral of addiction. And it's this thing right here. The objective that you put for the team and how you measure it. And it comes directly from the strategy of the company, aka how do we make money and get this bread. You can literally draw a line here that leads to more money for the company. Your team will build a new feature that sends a notification to users to get them on the app because you want to increase average time on the app per day. Because you want to increase engagement. Because you can directly correlate more engagement with more money. Now, this thing right here. This innocent looking loop is the secret that made software companies become trillion dollar giants. Because only with digital products you can build something, release it immediately and worldwide, and track exactly what the impact of what you did was in a matter of days. While Google was testing with a split test what specific shade of blue was leading people to click more on the links in Google search, yes, this is an actual test they did, a supermarket that wants to test if a certain aisle layout is better than another would take weeks and months to run their test, and they could not even accurately measure the impact of the change since you cannot have a multiverse with two versions of the same supermarket at the same time. This is a huge advantage that digital products and software products have versus everything else. But this loop in itself, well, it's not the problem. It's just an incredibly effective way to build products. When Nintendo was developing their open world game, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, their goal was to push players to explore the map on their own. So they analyzed the movements of the first group of players on the map and created a heat map to see where they went. And based on this, they were able to keep iterating on the map and create interest points, going from people just following the roads to creating a map that is inherently discoverable, which is an integral part of what made this game one of the best ones of all time. So if this loop is not the problem, where did things actually go wrong? Why does it seem like apps are only able to build stuff that makes us more and more addicted, instead of building things that make you happier? Where does the evil come from? When a company starts out, maybe they're just a small startup, here they put value for the user. Solving a real problem. 
If you're building a search engine, this is helping users get to the information they want in the easiest way. And that's what Google focused on in the beginning and why it was a revolutionary product. If you are building a social network, it's connecting with your friends. And that's what Facebook did 15 years ago. This is what it means to optimize for happiness. It's optimizing for the value that you bring and helping people solve the problems and struggles of their daily lives. Now, this is a very interesting topic, but it's very complex. And there's much more that I wasn't able to fit in this video. If you sign up to my free newsletter, the email club, Club, each week you'll get an exclusive video just for subscribers about tech and building stuff online and in the next episode i'm gonna go deeper into everything that we discuss in this video it's free to join and you can sign up with the link in the description but as you know things spiraled from value to attention hacking and dark patterns and this is because companies started to replace values and objective with more engagement if my users end up engaging with my app more then they're getting more value out of it right well no so I recently booked a flight for a trip that I have in Asia and this airline that I booked with has been bombarding me with emails trying to get me to download their everything app where I could get anything from my booking to streaming movies and renting cars. Now, this is the perfect example of products that started optimizing for engagement and not for value. Probably some executive somewhere was like, you know what, we could make people more engaged with our airline by making them watch movies on our app. But as it turns out, there are two main reasons why companies have been running like crazy towards this quest for more engagement. And for each one, there is a solution that can lead to building apps and tech products that optimize for happiness and not for how many times you log in each day. And for the first one, let me ask you a question. How happy are you? 12? 9,000? 80,000? 85? How much value did Spotify give you this month? 5.8? How much happiness did you get from Shazam this week? 3.1 millismiles? The reason why we've seen this run towards more engagement is because it's so easy to track and it's basically the only thing that product teams can put here as a key result. You can set up tools like Amplitude, Mixpanel or Google Analytics in a few hours and there you go, you have all the tracking and data and charts that you want. Optimizing for engagement has taken over because it's easy to measure, it's quantifiable, it's numbers. Ironically, if our devices had a way to actually measure your happiness somehow, people would freak out and think it's creepy, even though it might lead to building products that actually make you happier. And so what is the solution here? To me, it's changing what we measure to something that is not engagement. Couchsurfing, a service that allows you to get hosted and host people for free, some years ago has changed how they track success. From how much you engage with the app to something that is much more tied with the value and happiness that you get out of an app like this. The amount of time that you spend with the person that is hosting you. This is the metric that they ended up optimizing for and they were getting this from some service at the end of each stay. So how could we make this shift happen for all apps and products? Well, this is a very complex problem, but an idea could be introducing a happiness score, something that is standardized across the industry. The platforms and operating systems like Windows, Android and iOS could ask people each month on a rolling basis to rate the apps that they have installed and used based on how much value and happiness they're getting out of them. And the results can be made available to the developers of each app so they can track progress and use this as an actual metric. And to incentivize adopting this new standard, this can be added front and centers in all the app stores. And this way you'll know that the app you're about to download is providing or not value to users. Now, of course, this has its flaws, but it can be a first step and it can provide teams with quantitative measurement of the actual value and happiness that they are bringing to users. But the second reason why everything has been turned into more engagement is a spicy one because it's about money and more specifically monetization models. Today, basically, all modern tech products make money by either showing you ads while you're using the product, subscription that you pay every month for every year, or gamified microtransactions, which are popular especially in gaming, but also in apps like Tinder and Bumble, for example. But it wasn't always like this. 10 years ago, you were downloading apps from the App Store for $2.99 or buying a single song from iTunes Store for 99 cents. But over the last decade, basically everything has shifted towards advertising, in-app purchases or subscriptions. Why? Well, again, since we can perfectly monitor and measure engagement, we can optimize like crazy for it, make this loop spin incredibly fast. And so all the monetization models that relied on engagement have become popular and basically the standard now. With ads, the more you engage and spend time on the product, the more money the company makes. With in-app purchases, the more you interact, the more you spend. And subscriptions, it's debatable, but companies now can draw a very clear line between increasing engagement and increasing how much money they make. 
And when more engagement equals more money, it's very easy to get into predatory tactics and dark patterns and promoting addiction to your product. All of this in the name of God engagement. And so, how do we fix this? Well, this is more tricky than fixing measurement. These monetization models have become the standard for basically every tech product today. We have become used to not paying services that bring insane value to our lives. Imagine going to your dad in the 80s who was going on a road trip with his friends using an atlas and paper maps and telling him that there's this device and you can basically have navigation to anywhere in the world with live traffic and knowing all the restaurants and have all the photos of all the menus in the entire world, he definitely would have paid a good amount for something like that in the 80s. But today consumers have become used to getting products that give them insane value <laughs> for free, but that get monetized in a very predatory way. So again, it's tricky to solve this one, but one way would be to beat them at their own game and finding something that links with making more money that is stronger than engagement. If we're able to crack the measurement of real value that we provide, like we've seen in the step before, this can be linked directly to how much money the product makes. And if we find that this is a stronger link than engagement, we did it. If the incentive of the game now is to provide the most value, this will mean that advertisers will pay higher CPMs to appear on the apps that provide more value to customers. Subscription prices can become higher for products that you actually get more value from. And the same for in-app purchases. Of course, this will also need a huge shift in the way consumers are perceiving payments and value for these kind of apps. But I believe that the era of more engagement is not gonna last forever. Fixing these two things is what's needed to get rid of engagement right here and actually end up building products that optimize for value and happiness. Regardless of how much time your users spend on the app or how many times they log in a day, and yes, still making massive profits. But there is one last thing. While there are definitely things that are wrong with how some tech products today are manipulating users and creating addiction, the people that are complaining about how all technology is evil and these platforms are just beasts of Satan, they're doing it from a platform they can use for free. Uploading videos at no cost with no gatekeeper that can be seen by anyone in the world. They are making money and maybe possibly also making a living out of this. So maybe in the end, it's not all evil after all. If you like this video, consider subscribing to my channel because more videos like this one are coming. And in the meantime, here's another video that you might enjoy.